Coronavirus cases mount. Hospitals filling to the brim with patients. PPE for hospital workers becoming scarce. It appears this nation's taking a giant step backward. Florida's taken a step back in the fight against COVID-19. And there is new evidence to suggest the virus can float in the air and spread. Are these new people who are testing positive who are younger passing it on to those who are more susceptible to the illness and death? Dr. Jay Wolfson, Senior Associate Dean, Morsani College of Medicine, the University of South Florida, joining us here on The Morning Show. It is a frightening question, and Florida set a record for COVID deaths just yesterday. So when will we know the answer, or are we starting to get it now with that number yesterday? I think, Bruce, that we're starting to get it now, but we expected it several weeks ago. It's a cascading effect. We knew that when there would be increased exposure when we opened up the state, that more people would be in the, the circumstance where they'd have more proximity to more congestion and more time spent with those people in congestion. And that's really the calculus behind this disease. You're bound to have somebody cough, sneeze, sing, or yell when you're in those circumstances. And somebody is going to express the coronavirus from their mouth, which is how it happens. It's gonna float in the air and it's gonna get you. And even if you're asymptomatic, you can still spread it to others and you're gonna bring it home. And what we're seeing is increased exposure leads to increased positive testing, which we've seen, which leads to a greater number of acute cases, which leads to more hospitalizations, which leads to more ICU use and ultimately more deaths. And we're gonna see that for the next few weeks. Even with what's happening, even with the statistics, the White House paints a rosy picture and says the death toll's going down. Dr. Anthony Fauci makes it clear that is a false narrative. They're his words. Do the mixed messages worry you? Does it worry you that politics has tainted this fight? Unfortunately, it has tainted it. This really is not a political issue. It's a medical issue. It's a public health issue. You know, when police officers don their plaque jackets every single day, they're not expecting to get shot, but they want to protect themselves. It's uncomfortable. It's hot. But they wear them because they know it's the right thing to do. We get in our cars every day and most of us put seatbelts on. We put our children in strap down car seats because we know it's the safe thing to do for ourselves and for others. This has nothing to do with politics. This is a scientific reality. The disease is here. It's hurting people. And it's not just hurting the people we spread it to. We have recently learned, Bruce, that even if we have a mild case or an asymptomatic case, some percentage of people who get that are going to get what's called persistent acquired disease. They will get a disease they've never had before after they've had this, even if it's asymptomatic, a cardiovascular disease, a lung disease, a kidney disease, or a brain disease, and they will have it for the rest of their lives. This is serious. And even though parents are worried, even though teachers are worried, you have the demand, and that's what it is, a demand to open schools. You have the RNC, the convention coming to Jacksonville. Recipes for disaster? The convention is a possible recipe for disaster. In order to get here, people are going to have to go through airports. They're going to be in congested lines. They're going to be in a large room with lots of other people, coughing, sneezing, yelling, doing all kinds of things. That is a natural breeding ground for a super spreader area. Getting kids back to school is, a, is not just a political issue. It's a social and economic issue. Parents need to go back to work, and we need to find ways to protect the teachers, the staff, the children from each other, and the parents from what the children might bring bringing home and the community. Each community is trying to work this out, and I hope we can do it well. It's not just the flicking of the switch on and off. As the governor says, it's really like a, a dimmer switch where we have to monitor what's happening, and as we see sparks occurring in community, dive in to prevent there being a forest fire. Look, we go to the doctor when we're sick, and, and doc gives you a prescription. You don't take the prescription. You don't follow doctor's orders. You run the risk of not getting over whatever malady you have. We all understand the economic hardships. But are our memories so short we forget the death and what was going on in this nation's hospitals just a couple short months ago that we're not taking a prescription? Well, Bruce, you know, there are some communities in this state that really haven't experienced that. In New York City and New, York, New Jersey, Los Angeles, Chicago, Rome, and London, people were literally dropping dead like flies. We haven't seen that as proximate to most people here. Most people in Florida, you don't really know anybody who's died or who's been seriously ill. It's coming, and as they do that, they become converted, and unless you see it, unless you feel it, it's hard to believe, but it's happening. The hospitals are getting overwhelmed. Our staff in the hospitals are getting 
tired and burnt out. The governor has just shipped in several hundred nurses to help that out. If those frontline defenders of our health, the nurses, the physicians, the physician's assistants, and in our community, the firefighters, the paramedics, and the police who are going out there helping and rescuing and bringing people in who are sick, they're exposed every day. And if we lose them to this disease, we lose the safety net that we need every day in our community. This is serious. And it's, you know, the government can't help us. There is no vaccine yet. And even when there is one, it's going to be of limited use for only the lowest risk people. There is no treatment yet, except for those who are really, really sick. And there's no herd immunity. And Dr. Fauci has suggested to us that we may not get herd immunity from this. This is something new. It's something we've never had. So the bottom line here is people have to be responsible. They have to be respectful of others. They have to exercise common sense, which the governor is hoping that they will. And ultimately, it's the old Smokey the Bear thing, Bruce. Only you can prevent coronavirus. It's that simple. But sadly, what you're saying is it won't happen until we're hit over the head. Dr. Wolfson, thanks for your time. We appreciate you. We'll be right be back. Be safe and be well. You as well.